Uh, hey, everybody. This is Isaiah Colton, Bobby Gall with our first ever RHA podcast. If you don't know who RHA is, uh, we are Ren Home Advisors and we service uh, the upstate New York uh, area helping homeowners maximize the value of their property and uh, streamline the whole process. So they don't have to deal with any headache when they go to sell their home and more importantly, be able to move on with their life and feel good about the process. And so what we do is we come to you every week, giving you updates on what's happening in the market today, along with strategies and tactics on how to make sure that you're able to really understand just what's happening in the real estate market for yourself and your family's future. And so I have Bobby Gall, he's my partner, the broker record. And he runs um, RHA. And today we're going to be talking about the economic slowdown and why everyone should be scared out of their mind. Just kidding. Um, so the reality is, is there's a lot of misconceptions out there. There's a lot of conversation happening right now about the economy, what's happening, what it means to the real estate market. And we wanted to go live because we've gathered some information from some very credible sources, people that are at the cutting edge of real estate. We want to share that with you what's actually happening. And so, Bobby, I want to start off talking about what the, what does an economic slowdown mean for the housing market uh, overall? Well, it means interest rates are going up and people are scared of that. I mean, we just closed a loan yesterday at five and a half percent. You know, five and a half percent is high when you look at the last two years when people were two and a half, three percent, you know, um, compared to that, it's almost, you know, double. Right. So that is scaring people. But, you know, when you look historically, it's still considered a low. Okay. And um, for those, of, for the people that are, you know, you know, because um, recent surveys show that Americans are more and more concerned about, you know, like what's happening in the market and, um, there's a really a good quote from a really well-known mortgage specialist that talks about throughout history during recessionary periods, interest rates go up at the beginning of the recession. Uh, but in order uh, to come out of the recession, interest rates actually have to go down to stimulate the market. And I think that's really important to, you know, factor to consider is understanding how this process works. And right now we're kind of at the beginning of a recessionary period but that doesn't mean that's how it's going to stay forever, um, I think is another important point. And I want to go ahead and share my screen with some really, uh, some really interesting information um, that we got here for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. So if you look here, um, what, is this, what is this data telling us um, based on what's on our screen here? It's basically showing that, you know, the mortgage rates are going down um, after every recession. Um, and if you look at the first one, 1980, that's 16%, 18%, um, where people were financing. And I know if you were locked in at those times at 12%, this is what, um, John Lascala was telling me, um, they would find unique methods to pass that down because 12% at that rate was considered low. So right. people were signing over their rates when they were selling their houses, um, you know, and people wanted 12%. So just looking at this, I mean, a lot of people are scared. A lot of people don't know what to do, if we should buy, you know, or we should continue renting, or if we should sell and upgrade, sell and downgrade, you know, what should we do mm -hmm. historically and looking at history, um, real estate has been a asset that stores value like gold you know um people put their money in real estate and regardless of what the market is doing if you take a 10-year period and you look at it real estate has always gone up regardless right. of what's happening in the money markets regardless of what's happening um you know interest rates or, or whatever we will always see a increase in in real estate and it's, it's never gone down yeah, I think what's interesting is when I look at this too, is you see over the past five years, mortgage rates have fallen um, an average of 1.8 point, uh, percentage points um, during the recession uh, as you're going through it. And 
in many cases, they've continued to fall after the fact, which I think is a really, really interesting, uh, you know, some, something interesting to consider. One of the things that, uh, one of the things I think is also important is that let's say that you buy something now or you go to sell and you're buying and the interest rates do go down, you can always refinance, right? You can always refinance your home if they, if it does go down. And I think a lot of people don't think about that. So uh, what are your thoughts on that strategy? Well, my thoughts of that strategy is, you know, it's important to have your money tied up because when you look at inflation, inflation's at what? They're publicly saying it's at eight or nine percent, which in my head, it's more than that, right? So if, if I have a hundred thousand dollars sitting in the bank account, I'm losing nine percent, which you know is nine thousand dollars every single year. If I finance a house at six percent, I'm still beating inflation because houses, if you look at the last three years, um historically, uh for that time. Frame, according to Yahoo Finance, it's been going up 14%. So if I wow. if I'm paying 6% and you know it's going up 14%, I'm still ahead, you know, eight, nine percent. I'm still ahead of the game. And you know, this quote, it's it's always been there ever, ever since the beginning of times, is you know, real wealth is built by real estate, regardless of what times you know you're you're in it. That's why you see all these big hedge funds, right? In 2008, market crash, nobody wanted to own real estate. Guess what they did? Hedge funds picked up every single thing they can. And if you look at who owns majority of the rental properties in the United States, it's, you know, it's a shocking fact, but hedge funds own the majority of the rental properties. Because they know that that's where straight wealth is. And we do have, you know, us having national and international ties. I have attorneys, you know, in New York state that are just buying properties. And you know, Isaiah, what they're telling me is, I don't care if I'm making money on this property. I just want it to store my cash. Right. Well, how about the residential homeowner that's not an investor? Let's speak to them because that's really who is probably going to be listening to this. What should, right, their, so what should their action step? What's the bottom line here? if they're thinking about selling their home, what they should do. So right now, it's one of those things where if you sell right now, um, you're still getting multiple offers, you're still getting over asking. So you're making your profit right there. So yep. a few points in interest is not really going to affect you, right? The whole point of the game is sell at the top, buy at the low. So you sell now, you might have to you know, finance and get a loan. And then a few years down the road, just like you said, refinance. So if I'm making an extra 50, 60,000 just because I sold now, yep. and then I'm paying, you know, you look at it, I'm paying an extra 2,000 a year. And let's say it drags on for three years. I'm, I'm still ahead when you do 60,000 minus, you know, the $2,000 um, that I'm, I'm losing because of a higher point. So re right. regardless right. of what the rates are, and, and you know, if you're just a homeowner and you don't care about this and you're just looking at straight, you know, living conditions for yourself, what are your options? Honestly? Yeah, that's really good. Are you going to go, are you going to go rent a house? Right. And throw all of that money away. Right. So if yeah. you rent a house, who cares what the interest rate is? You're throwing 100% of, you know, your monthly payment away. But at yeah. this, you're, when you're a homeowner, you're still leveraging the bank's money. Yep. And, and you're still putting money uh, towards principal. Yeah. And you're, really, really you're investing point. in an asset that goes up every single year. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And what we're going to do is we're going to, in the next podcast, explain to you, we want you guys to come back next week, because we're going to explain to you what for, how Forbes breaks this process down. Sorry, Fortune Magazine breaks this process down, and they explain this even um, in further detail, but the bottom line is whether you're bu buying or selling, is it, it's, it's still in your best interest to do so right now. Um, particularly even if you're buying, because the value of properties, they might not go up as much, but they're still going to go up over the next five years. And, um, that will outweigh, um, any concerns that you may have now with interest rates. Um, and as we come out of this recession, uh, you, you know, I remember back in, 
we were having a similar conversation in 2012 and 13. And everyone's like, well, you know, things have gone way up since 2009. I don't know. And they just kept going up and they kept going up and they kept going up. Right. So, um, you know, you just have to really factor and look at the trends, look at the numbers, meet with a real estate professional that can walk you through the facts. Don't listen to the news. The news wants to get everybody concerned and worried that their goal is to get everybody scared and just really not for any malicious reason, except for to get your attention. And it creates a lot of confusion for people, right? And so just making sure that this is an important decision for you. This is your life. This is uh, something that means a lot to you. So make sure that you're making an informed decision and reach out to a realtor to do so. Well, and Isaiah, I don't, I don't think we have to look that far back, you know, with, with all due respect, looking at ending of 2019, 2020, right? Mm -hmm. COVID happened. What, what did every single buyer say? People are out of work. People are on employment. We're in quarantine. I'm going to steal houses. Yeah. And then prices went up, skyrocketed. And what they say, I'm not going to buy a house in 2020. I'm going to wait till 2021 when the market crashes. Yeah. And then it didn't crash. And then 2022, they said, I'm going to buy a house when it crashes. And it didn't crash. People that were going to buy a house in 2020, um, and when they ended up buying in 2022, the market went up 30%. Yeah, that's a really good point. And so, so keep that, yeah, keep that in mind. And for the next podcast, we'll talk to you more about the differences. And I'm glad this is a good place to end, Bobby. We'll talk to you about the differences between what happened in 2009 versus what's happening now in the economy, because it really comes down to supply and demand. And we'll talk to you about that next week. Um, so for now, um, Don't get scared, get informed, make wise decisions and uh, share and like this podcast with any of your fellow, fellow friends and family members so they can also be informed too. And we'll see you next week.